Hey guys. So the video I made of our Germany and Austria trip was really well received, so I wanted to make one of our Canada trip as well. For this trip, we spent five nights in Banff and three nights in Jasper, and we mostly spent our time hiking and looking at the beautiful mountains and lakes. We were supposed to arrive in Calgary around 3 p.m. on Monday, but didn't actually make it until 11 p.m. due to a flight cancellation. Thanks a lot, Air Canada. When we got there, we went through the drive through at Tim Hortons and then drove straight to our hotel in Banff. On Tuesday, we went to Yoho National Park, which is about an hour and a half drive from Banff. We went there to hike the Ice Line Trail, and it was a tough hike with a lot of elevation gain, but once we made it to the top, it was so beautiful being up there amongst all the glacial ice and getting to walk through the streams coming down from the mountain. We also had an amazing view of the mountains and Takakaw Falls when we stopped to eat our fancy lunch of PB&Js. Overall, we definitely thought this hike had great views and was worth the effort. After that hike, we walked to the base of Takakaw Falls. The path there was short and paved and easy enough for anyone of any age to complete. We were blown away at how far the water sprayed from the falls. We were getting soaked from over a quarter of a mile away from the actual falls. Overall, it was a great first day, and we ended it by picking up Domino's on the way back to our hotel. I know it wasn't the classiest meal, but stuff was really expensive in Banff, and the options weren't all that appealing either. So we were able to save some money by eating at some fast food places. Wednesday morning, we went to Lake Minnewanka to get our pictures taken. We were really pleased with how they turned out. I'll also, I put a referral link in the description for $25 off in case you want to get pictures taken on your next trip. We love capturing the memories that we make while traveling, and getting pictures made on our trips helps to ensure that we don't have to come home with a bunch of selfies. We had gotten shuttle tickets to go to Lake Louise that afternoon, but when we got to the shuttle transport location, there was another shuttle leaving for Lake Moraine, and the guy working there said it was harder to get to Lake Moraine since the parking lot fills up a lot faster, normally around 3 to 4 a.m. during the summer. So he told us, go make your life beautiful today and get on that bus. He actually said that. <laughs> so we followed his advice and went ahead to Lake Moraine and we were so glad that we did. We saw many beautiful lakes throughout the trip, but this was by far the most beautiful. We walked the Shoreline Trail, which was a short and easy hike along the lake that I would recommend for all ages. Afterwards, Cameron stayed at the lake with a book and a cup of hot chocolate, and I hiked Larch Valley to Sentinel Pass. It was a really gorgeous hike that took me through the Valley of the Ten Peaks. The views were insane near the top, and it was steeper and there was still some snow present. After the hike, I saw a sign that said they recommend crampons for that particular hike in its current conditions. But fortunately, I made it to the top just fine with my regular hiking boots and poles. A lot of people consider this to be one of the best trails in the Banff area, and I would definitely agree with that. Cameron got sick with some sort of virus that night and didn't feel great the rest of the trip. Since she didn't feel like hiking on Thursday, I decided to wake up at 2 a.m. for a major sunrise hike. I planned on hiking all day in Kananaskis, and I wanted to start with Tent Ridge because I heard it was an amazing hike, and our photographer said it was her favorite sunrise spot ever. So I drove the hour and a half to get there and started hiking around 4 a.m. in the pitch black darkness. If I saw a bear, it would have been like 10 feet away from me at that point, but thankfully I did not. If you do this hike, I definitely recommend doing it clockwise because there's a little bit of rock scrambling on the way up that was exposed and sketched me out just a little bit, you know, being alone and kind of in the dark still. Um, but man, being at the top of Tent Ridge Peak and watching the sunrise without another soul in sight was definitely the coolest moment of the trip for me. And it's hard to say, but this might have been my favorite hike of the trip as well. Being on the mountain ridge for so long, probably two plus miles of the hike, it, that was so cool to me. So I highly recommend hiking Tent Ridge Peak. When I finished that hike, I drove to another hike in Kananaskis. 
Sarail Ridge via Lawson Lake Trail. The hike to Lawson Lake was a moderate hike, but the section up to Sarail Ridge was absolutely brutal. It was basically straight up for three quarters of a mile with over a thousand feet of elevation gain. But the view at the top of the ridge was phenomenal. Friday morning, we woke up at 4.30 a.m. to make it to Lake Louise before sunrise. After spending some time enjoying the views, we split up again for a couple of hours since Cameron still wasn't feeling great. I hiked up to Lake Agnes and the tea house there. Even around 7 a.m., this was still the most crowded hike I did. The tea house hadn't even opened when I got to the top and there was already a line forming. They don't have any running water up there, so they boil lake water for their drinks and they make all their snacks by hand. I got a wild berry green tea that was pretty solid. And I got a chocolate chip cookie bar that I split with Cameron when I got back. After drinking the tea, I decided to go up to Devil's Thumb. Despite the elevation gain, the hike up to Devil's Thumb was pretty enjoyable and had some great views along the side of the mountain. Once I made it to the top, I had a good view of both Lake Agnes and Lake Louise. Overall, I enjoyed this hike a lot. We picked up lunch from Rocky Mountain Bagel, which was a place our photographer had recommended. And the food was great. We went back to Lake Minnewanka to rent a canoe and to go out on the lake, but unfortunately the guy told us they were shutting down for the day due to the wind. Instead, we went back to Banff and did a short hike to Bow Falls, which started just outside of our hotel. I haven't mentioned this yet, but if you go to Canada for hiking, you'll definitely need bug spray because the mosquitoes are brutal. But still, the hike to Bow Falls was a nice walk that anyone could do. Saturday morning, we went back to Lake Minnewanka around 5.30 a.m. for sunrise, and it was very beautiful and peaceful. On our way back, we saw some mule deer in the town of Banff, which was really cool. Speaking of, here's an awesome montage of all the wildlife we saw. We then packed up and headed out for the famous Icefields Parkway Drive. The Icefields Parkway Drive is the drive between Banff and Jasper. And while it would only take you about three hours or so to drive it straight through, there is so much to see along the way that you honestly should spend at least an entire day doing the drive. We made a lot of stops along this route. Herbert Lake, Bow Lake Lookout, which in our opinion was one of the most beautiful stops. Pado Lake, Waterfowl Lakes. We also stopped for a while at Mistea Canyon. It was an easy half mile hike to the canyon. And we loved it so much that we decided to stay and have lunch there on the rocks. This was probably our favorite stop off on the drive. We also stopped for a minute at the Weeping Wall viewpoint. But honestly, even though there were so many amazing viewpoints, just the normal drive itself is insane. There is so much beauty. It makes you want to take pictures and video nonstop. But our most memorable stop was at the Athabasca Glacier. We booked tickets to be able to walk out onto the glacier. You have to ride onto the glacier in these massive industrial looking military grade vehicles and our driver said that in order to get there, we had to go down and up the steepest commercial road in North America. Also, and I thought this was fascinating, he mentioned that you can still find live World War II ammo in the Canadian Rockies because the Allied troops trained there, thinking they were going to be fighting in the Alps in Europe. Crazy. But walking on the glacier was surreal. The guide said that it was 200 meters of solid ice, but that it was melting more and more every year. 
We got to drink some of the glacier water, which was really cool. It was very cold and very refreshing. We also walked on the Skywalk, which is a 600 foot tall glass paneled walkway that had a great view. I couldn't get Cameron to come out and join me, unfortunately. She felt more comfortable on the concrete. Also on the drive, we saw the Mount Snow Dome, a mountain that sits on the Great Continental Divide with snow on top that does, at least I think, and from what I remember from our guide, what no other mountain or snow does, which is feed into three different oceans, the Atlantic, Pacific, and Arctic, which is super cool. We also stopped off at the Goats and Glacier Lookout where we saw, you're never gonna guess this, mountain goats and a really nice view. And our final stop on the Icefields Parkway was the Athabasca Falls, which was awesome. Overall, this drive was fantastic and something I think anyone at any age and fitness level would love doing. Cameron said this was her favorite day of the whole trip, and so we both highly recommend it. The next morning, I did the Bald Hills hike. It was a moderate hike, but it was one of the longer ones I completed. Some hikes aren't very scenic until you get to the top, but that wasn't the case with this hike. I thought the views and the landscape throughout were pretty solid. From what I noticed, you can avoid crowds by starting a hike early, 7 or 8 a.m. for a lot of trails, or starting them later in the day, like 4 or 5 p.m. when people are heading back for dinner. I stopped for lunch at the top and met a very bold chipmunk. He would not leave me alone at all the entire time I was up there. Overall, I really enjoyed this hike a lot. While I was gone, Cameron went into town to the laundromat to wash some of our clothes. She said it was a really neat laundromat that had a coffee bar on the inside. And I think she enjoyed just being able to spend some time in the town. That afternoon, we did the Valley of the Five Lakes hike. This hike is one of the most popular in Jasper and I could definitely see why. You get to walk by five different lakes on the hike and they're all simply named First Lake, Second Lake, Third Lake, Fourth Lake, and you guessed it, Fifth Lake. All the lakes were really beautiful and we would both recommend this hike. After that, we went to, I don't know how to pronounce it, but Malign Canyon and hiked part of the path to see the canyon. It was really neat. For dinner that night, we picked up pizza from North Face Pizza and it was great. I'm sorry I forgot to get a video, but I would recommend them for sure. I left early the next morning to hike the Sulphur Skyline Trail. It's another popular hike in the Jasper area, but it was pretty unexciting, honestly, until you make it to the peak, in my opinion. When I got to the top, I was the only one there for 30 minutes or so, and I got to sit up there and enjoy the view, which was really nice. But on the way down, I passed a million people. Honestly though, this might be an unpopular opinion, but I thought the Sulphur Skyline hike might have been a little overrated compared to some of the others. Not bad, but not my favorite either. That afternoon, I hiked the Edith Cavell Meadows Trail to the East Ridge Summit. Fun fact, Edith Cavell was a nurse that helped wounded soldiers on both sides in World War II, and was evidently so beloved that they named this beautiful mountain after her. Even driving up to the mountain, you start getting crazy views, and then probably only a half mile from the parking lot, there's a giant glacier and glacial lake with streams of water flowing into it. It is a sight to behold. I thought this trail was beautiful pretty much all the way through, which is not true of a lot of trails. It was definitely the greenest of all the hikes we did. So many flowers and trees. One crazy fact we learned from our glacier tour was that since Canada's growing season is so short, only like 30 to 90 days, we were told, the small trees, the ones that are four to five feet tall, are like 40 to 50 years old. And the larger trees can be two to 300 years old. That's how long it takes them to grow to that height, which is crazy. The meadows had only recently been opened due to a prolonged snow and a lot of it still hadn't melted, but I was really glad that I was able to hike it while it was open. The ridge had such an amazing view. 
Mount Edith Cavell was a really beautiful mountain and it was a fantastic hike to end on. We picked up Jasper China Restaurant for dinner and it was delicious. On our last day, Tuesday morning, we went to Kumama for breakfast and it was fantastic. Cameron ordered the French toast and it was actually the biggest piece of French toast I have ever seen. I had to help her eat it, but it was delicious. After breakfast, we set out on the Icefields Parkway Drive to travel back to Banff. We stopped back at the Columbia Icefields building to get Cameron a drink at what we found out was the highest elevated Starbucks in Canada. Random, but cool. Then we stopped back in Banff for a snack at McDonald's and we drove to Lake Minnewanka planning to rent a canoe and go out on the lake, but you'll never guess what the guy told us. They were just about to close due to heavy winds for the second time on this trip. Bummer. So we just walked around the lake some before heading to Calgary. And on our way to the airport, we stopped at this place called Damascus and got authentic shawarma. And let me tell you, it was good stuff. Highly recommend if you're in Calgary. Overall, it was a fantastic trip in a really beautiful place. I'm very thankful for all the awesome things we got to do and for all the memories we made. If you ever go to Banff or Jasper in Canada, hopefully this video will be useful to you in planning and deciding what things to do or not to do. And since this is a real estate channel, if you have any real estate related questions or you're looking to buy or sell, please reach out to us. The only thing we like doing more than traveling is helping people meet their real estate needs. So thank you for watching. Be sure to subscribe and we will see you guys next time.